Recounting and performance. Okay. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to the December 14th meeting of the Boston Art Commission. My name is Karen Goodfellow and I'm the Director of Public Art at the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. And in that capacity, I'm also the Director of the Boston Art Commission. In accordance with the Commonwealth um, of Massachusetts Executive Order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, we're conducting this meeting virtually. Uh, to ensure public access to the deliberations of the Boston Art Commission, the public can join this meeting through telephone and video conferencing. For those of you with us today, this meeting is being recorded and closed captioning is available. You can access it at the bottom of the screen. If you have trouble locating the button, please chat us for assistance. And I also ask that everyone update their names and pronouns and to keep, please keep yourself muted. Artworks proposed for City of Boston property are reviewed at public meetings of the Boston Art Commission like this one. The BAC is the commissioning body for the City of Boston. Working together with the public art team and the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, the BAC is an independent board composed of two and uh, seven appointed volunteer art and design professionals that holds public meetings to review, discuss, and vote on matters concerning the city's art collection. The BAC has exclusive authority to approve and commission artworks intended to be added to the city's collection or to be placed on city property. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture and the Boston Art Commission believe that public art is any artwork installed in publicly accessible spaces where they can be experienced by everyone. We engage in discussions about public art in Boston in order to foster the creation and collection of artworks that reflects the people's ideas, histories, and futures of Boston, which is on the traditional homeland of the Massachusetts people. We acknowledge the continuing presence of the Massachusetts as well as the Wampanoag and Nipma peoples. We also recognize the indigenous peoples represented in the city's residents in addition to those in the diaspora. Our meetings are generally held the second Tuesday of each month to review current public art projects cited on or proposed for city of Boston property. And we hope you'll continue to join us. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture has a dedicated public art team that manages all daily operations and duties related to public art projects cited on or proposed for City of Boston property. This team facilitates the Boston Art Commission's monthly public meetings and manages all phases of, the, of Boston's public art projects. In collaboration with the Boston Art Commission, community members and colleagues at the City of Boston, I'm joined today by the public art team, Sarah Rodrigo, Senior Public Art Project Manager, and Trisha Gorain, Collections Manager, who will be helping to facilitate this meeting. We may also be joined by Liza Quinones, public art uh, mural consultant. And Sarah will add our contact information to the chat. And I will pass to Chair Mark Pasnick. Hey, thanks, Karen. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm calling this public hearing to order at 4.06 p.m. Today, the Boston Art Commission will be holding its monthly public meeting. I will now take roll call of the commissioners to conform a quorum. After I state your name, commissioners, please say here. I'll begin with Vice Chair Equa Holmes. Here. Camilo Alvarez. Here. John Andres. Here. Michael Canizzo. Here. Cara Elliott Ortega. Here. Robert Freeman. Here. Brian Hone. Here. And Kim Pinder. I don't believe she's with us, is she? Okay, uh, but we do have a quorum. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we will now review the meeting minutes from the previous November 9th meeting of the Boston Art Commission. Are there any comments or modifications any commissioner would like to make? Hearing none, I wonder if I could get a motion on the table to accept the minutes. I'll put forward a motion that we accept the minutes from um, the last or Approve meeting. the minutes, I think that's the language. Approve, approve the minutes. Approve the minutes from our last meeting. Okay, thank you, Equa. A second? I'll second that. Uh, great, uh, so I'll just read off the roll call. Uh, all those in favor say yes. Equa? Yes. Camilo? Yes. John? Yes. Michael? Yes. Cara? Yes. Bob? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Uh, and I'm a yes as well, so the motion passes. Aqua, you're up next.
Are you muted? Going away here. I'm trying to stay muted because there are things going on in my house while we're having this meeting. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say hello to everyone. And um, on the slide you're looking at today is our agenda. The agenda we'll be following. Um, the agendas for these meetings are always posted publicly on boston.gov. So if you ever want to get the jump on what's going on with our meetings, go there first. We'll begin with the director's report and then move on to presentations for review. At the time of presentations, we'll provide you with information about how you can participate. We'll now have Karen Goodfellow give her director's report. Uh, and before she does that, I believe that Kim Pinder signed in. Kim, are you there? Just for our record? Yes. Okay, great. I am here. Okay, okay. Well, welcome, Kim. Thanks. Karen, turning it over to you. Okay, thanks, Mark. Um, so I'd like to start my report um, just by thanking members of the Boston Art Commission for all their work this year. Um, I know it's been a complicated year. We've done a lot on Zoom. Um, and I just also want to make such a note that that you all are um, are primarily our volunteers, and that you give your time not just for these meetings, but you also make commitments for reviewing artist selection process, and you know, in the community to ensure that we engage, um, you know, on each of the projects that we're doing. And I just want to express really genuine thanks for our, for our work in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. Um, it really is mean, meaningful and I think makes, you know, these projects so much more public by having you sit on this board, having you really listen and engage with people. And I know that each of you is here um, as a very busy person um, and someone who really loves Boston and loves art. And really we all um, appreciate you, you coming and working with us every day. Um, and um, especially at these big public meetings. And we also want to thank all the community members who engage with us throughout the year, the artists, the librarians, the organizers, the architects, the activists, and the dedicated neighbors whose interest in public art um, also make this work possible and who keep pushing us to do better um, and challenge us when we're not doing enough. Um, we look forward to another year of supporting transformative artworks and diverse artists that reflect the city of Boston and, and shape the, the future of our city. Um, today, we have uh, four presentations for review today. Um, three artworks are commissioned under the Transformative Public Art, uh, the Joy Agenda program, are completed, and we're asking the commission to review and accept them into the collection. And these artworks are four murals by Alex Cook for the Engagement Center in Newmarket. Um, and together by the artist collective Nizakar, the Engagement Center um, in Newmarket. Dujan's Dal Kirhual, which is Breton for Respect and Longevity by Cyril Conan uh, at the Pat White Apartments in Brighton. And we also have a city initiated public art commission for final review today. Uh, Play 23, a series of artworks for the DeWitt Playground at Madison Park Athletic Complex in Roxbury by the Play Team, which is a partnership between Marlon Forrester and Studio Luz. We'd also like to provide a brief update regarding the subcommittee meeting of the Boston Art Commission, uh, which was held to review and discuss the City of Boston Public Art and Processes and Boston Art Commission bylaws. The meeting was recorded and is posted on the city's website. The subcommittee of the BAC met on December 7th at a public meeting to discuss the policy document. Uh, it was first introduced, the document, in 2017 as a means to create consistency and transparency in our daily process, processes, um, policies, and operations. And it also creates clarity for artists, community members, and other city departments. We plan to use this as a source document to create really user-friendly guidelines and uh, website content to continue to make it more and more accessible. Revisions will be brought to the full commission at a future meeting. Uh, we're hoping to do so in January, and we received written testimony this month um, uh, about adding plaques and signage, and uh, we'll, we'll pull that into the conversation as well. And I have a few updates on community-initiated commissions. We received uh, the artist agreement from TBF, 
um, on the embrace and we're reviewing it with assistant corporation counsel. Uh, you'll recall that after some scheduling delays, uh, we had been meeting with them and we're really excited to be moving forward and to be able to review um, their agreement so that we can make sure that, that the content is uh, um, considered as we move forward with our MOU with them and the acceptance of the artwork and in particular, the maintenance fund and intellectual property and commercial licensing. Boston Parks and Recreation Department's renovation of the Justice Edward O. Gordine Veteran Memorial Park in Nubian Square broke ground in October. The Justice Gordine and African-American Veterans Memorial Bars by uh, Karen Udemy have reached the midpoint of fabrication. Um, and the, uh, the statue itself is, uh, is cast in bronze, is in, in process. We did a studio visit recently and we were really excited to see them. Uh, Vice Chair Holmes, Commissioner Freeman, Sarah Rodrigo and I visited Boccaccio Studios and met with Karen Udemy and Jeff Boccaccio to review progress uh, on the portrait, the statue, as well as the bar release. And you can see a photo of that, that visit here. The legacy of Frederick Douglass is reaching the midpoint of fabrication and the design and the process for the Associated Plaza project is in process. Bookmarked by Stu Schechter, commissioned by the Friends of the Mattapan branch of the BPL, received final design approval from this commission last year, uh, but needed some additional funding. And we we're able to secure some capital funding as the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture to complete the project. And we are currently negotiating an MOU with both the fabricator and installer and the artist and hope to see that move forward very soon. And then one short-term community initiated project is in progress. I Live Under Your Sky 2 by Shilpa Gupta, commissioned by Now and There, proposed for the Charlestown Navy Yard, um, and that still has an anticipated installation for spring 2022. Next we'll review long-term city initiated public art projects. We didn't have any dedication since our last BAC meeting in November, but three transformative murals have been completed and will be presented for review and vote for acceptance tonight. The artwork for the Roxbury Branch by Joe Wardwell in collaboration with Nakia Hill and the 826 Boston Y Lab writers is 66% installed. The final set of panels will be installed in early January and we look forward to celebrating this amazing work once it's complete. And you can see an installation image at the top of the slide. Three projects are in fabrication. Memory Diffusion by Masari Studios is scheduled for installation in the spring of 2022. The structural supports and electrical wiring for the artwork were installed last month. The creative by Simon Donovan and Ben Olmsted received its final site approval from the Public Improvement Commission on November 18th and the concrete foundation and pedestal will be installed in the near future. The pedestal will be a deep charcoal gray in contrast with the adjacent sidewalk and the top will have a um, chamfered uh, edge. The artists have begun work on the sculpture of fabrication. And Monica Bravo's piece for East Boston Police Station, Unis Mundus, is in process. The structural supports are installed and the glass components will be installed in January. We're happy to, be, to report that it seems like the artwork will be in place for the building opening, which is a big deal for us in terms of the percent for art program. That is often our goal that we don't make. And so we're really excited to actually have the artwork in before the building opens. And projects and final design include the Artworks for the DeWitt Playground by the play team that are here tonight uh, to present for you for review and final vote. And several uh, other transformative projects are in design, including murals for several Boston Housing Authority sites and the East Boston Senior Center. And we'll share those with you early in the new year. Two more projects are in final design. Deep Time Stories to Jamaica Plain by Chris, Christina Perenio and Amin Taj, which we expect to see in January. And Jeremy Sobek Harrison's artwork for the entrance of the Roxbury branch. Three projects are in preliminary design, both artworks for Vine Street BCYF, which we are pleased to report will both be coming in for review early in the new year, and the Ruggles Corridor integrated artwork by Jenny Sabin, which will be kicking off in the new year. Uh, you can see an image um, for Vine Street, uh, Destiny Palmer's work right there on the right, and we're actually doing a site visit this week, so we're really excited for that. Three projects are in various points of negotiating their contracts, including a third party, third project for the Roxbury branch, the Boston Public Library, a commission for the Adams Street branch of the BPL in Dorchester, and the new unincorporated partnership between Lamerchi Frazier and Ralph Helmick for Engine 42 that you approved last month. The call for, to artists for a mural to celebrate the life and legacy of Rita Hester closed last Friday, December 10th. We look forward to reviewing the applications with the Artist Insight Recommendation Working Group, which is comprised of members 
from the trans and non-binary community. We want to thank Trans Emergency Fund and Trans Resistance for all their help in promoting this call. We also want to thank Lala Shanks, who's been leading the community engagement effort as the consultant on the project, and former artist in residence Bolden, who originally proposed the project last fall while in residence with the city. We'll be opening a call to artists for the new Engine 17 fire station Dorchester at the end of this month. Uh, but we do have um, another call open this time, which I'll review uh, right now. Um, this is a call for an Indigenous public art and cultural spaces consultant or consultant team. You can see here that this one closes on December 17th, so that is coming up. We're looking for an individual or team with expertise on regional Indigenous art, uh, arts, cultures, and communities who will work with our team, the public art team and the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. Uh, to review and inform the City of Boston's public art commissioning process and governmental approaches to art, property, and land in Boston. Uh, we held two virtual info sessions in November, and the call, as I mentioned, will close this Friday, December 17th at 5 p.m. Uh, you'll see the link on the screen, um, which will give you access to the call, and we'll also add that to the chat. Finally, we'll uh, briefly review collections projects. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture will soon be releasing a call to artists for a photographer to complete photo documentation of the existing collection in anticipation of Artsite, the City of Boston's public art website. The Friends of the Public Garden recently provide us with updates about their annual maintenance that took place over 2021. Daedalus Inc. performed annual conservation maintenance on the Christus Attucks Monument, uh, also referred to as the Boston Massacre Memorial, uh, the Papal Mass Marker, or the Papal Mass Tablet, the Royal Navy Tablet, the Fox Hill Marker, the Edward Filene Tablet, the, uh, the Lafayette Tablet, the Wendell Phillips Tablet, and the uh, Colonel Thomas Cass Sculpture, and the um, Thaddeus uh, Kosciusko Sculpture, the Leif Erickson Sculpture, the Boston Women's Memorial, and the Bagheera Fountain. The outer rims of the Triton Babies and Bagheera Fountain were repointed, as well as the steps surrounding the William Lloyd Garrison statue. Josh Crane of Dallas Inc., our conservation house doctor, is completing a collections audit and will submit a full report by the end of December. And this full report will inform um, our spring and summer conservation projects, which are all being coordinated by uh, Trisha Gilrain, who is working very closely with Dallas. One other item is the start time of our meetings. Um, we um, have been asked if it would be possible for us to delay our start to 4.30 rather than 4 o'clock. Um, and I'll just want to float that before you all, and I'll hand it back to Chair uh, Mark Pesnick to discuss this possible change. Thanks, Karen. And uh, before we discuss that, I just wanted to say thank you for your kind words about our involvement, and I think we should echo them right back at the staff uh, and the team that does so much to make art in the city uh, better, uh, public art to uh, to be more and more wonderful every year. And I think uh, you the all of you have been so dedicated and made our jobs a whole lot easier, I think, than your jobs. Uh, and so it, for us, it's been a pleasure to work with you. So thank you so much uh, at the end of the year. Mark, I'd like to second that for the whole team. Here, here. Also. <laughs> thank you all. You're welcome. All right, um, so the proposition to move back by a half an hour is actually raised by me. Um, I have been missing all semester long faculty meetings that happen to coincide uh, with this and the extra half an hour would give me a little bit more time to be in those meetings. So I'm wondering if there's other commissioners who might have a problem with pushing it back by a half an hour to a 4.30 start, which would mean um, typically we'd be going a little past six o'clock with um, the meeting. So. Does anybody have uh, any issues or things that you want to raise about that? Does it work better for anyone? I guess that's also. Not better, but it's definitely doable as long as we don't go too long into the, the evening hours. Yeah. Maybe we can, if we know that there's a very big agenda, we could consider in advance starting back at the four o'clock. I'm fine with it. Do we need to take a vote on this or can we just decide? I don't think so. That's an administrative thing, right? When we, oh, for Kim, it's better 4.30 too. Perfect. I'm fine with it also, Mark. Great. Camilo, okay with you? Yes, okay. Yes. 
Uh, maybe I'll just poll everybody and make sure Brian. Brian says I see a thumbs yep, up. I'm good. Kara. Good with her. Okay. And oh, Michael. Michael and John. Fine button. Okay. Great. Well, thank you guys for all considering that. Um, I think maybe that will start with our January meeting. Uh, by the way, this would only be for during the school year for me. Um, so once we get into the summer and I will actually be on sabbatical next year, so it won't impact next year at all. This is just for the spring, uh, probably four meetings. So thank you, everyone. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, we will now move on to items on the agenda for review, public testimony and commission votes. Here's how you can participate in today's meeting. During the meeting, please keep yourself muted. If you have technical difficulties during the meeting, you can ask questions in the chat and a member of staff will help you. After presentations and commissioners clarifying questions, myself and Aqua Holmes may invite public testimony. If you would like to participate, you can press the raise your hand icon and staff will put you in a digital line for comment. You can also let staff know that you have a question in the chat. If you're calling in, press star nine to raise your hand. Please remember to keep your comments on topic and brief. Aqua? Yeah, so um, our goal for um, today, as in all of our meetings, is to have a good experience for all and for community members to feel comfortable sharing their feedback and questions. So be mindful of and respectful of other people's time when speaking so that other participants feel comfortable adding their comments. You can always submit longer written testimony to BAC at boston.gov. While you may disagree with other attendees testimony, please don't interrupt them during their allotted time and keep questions and comments project specific. If you are called on, we'd love to hear your name, title and program if applicable and an organization. And we also just ask that you keep everything kind and neighborly, uh, so no negative language. Okay, thanks, Aqua. Uh, our first presentation is acceptance of four murals by Alex Cook for the interior of the Engagement Center. I'll hand it over to Sarah, uh, who will present the work for, to us. Sarah? Thank you, Chair. Um, this project is at the Engagement Center and New Market. And you can see the location on this map, along with the other two transformative murals that we'll be presenting for acceptance tonight. And I just want to note that we don't ask the artists to, or we don't require the artists to attend acceptance presentations, but I believe that all three of the artists of these murals are here with us, um, which is wonderful. And I'd like to invite Alex, if he'd like to say a few words quickly to the commission before I present his work um, for acceptance. He is welcome to do that if he would like to. I thought I saw him here and I'm not sure if he's, there you are. Yeah. Hi, sure. Well, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much to the commission and to everyone. It was a, a real pleasure and honor to work on this project. Um, the four pictures are um, linked by uh, a feeling of basically uh, an intention and feeling of, of love and peace for those who come into the space. Um, in my work, I try to care for the people who will be engaging with it uh, through color and choice of, of subject matter and also the specific messages. The main one is, is you are loved. So um, that's basically basically it. This, this has been my effort to, to care for the space uh, in the same way that somebody would, would care for their home to make it feel like a, like a home that was filled with, with love and a place you want to be. So uh, it was my, my pleasure to work on this project. Alex, thank you so much. Um, we do also have some project partners here. I just want to alert the commission to that um, who are here in support of these projects. So Alex very kindly shared some brief descriptions and information about each of these murals, which I'll go through now. This mural is Tree of Life, and it's sited in the entrance hall of the building. It measures seven feet wide by nine feet high. And this is the description, a simple life-affirming tree of life image greets all who enter through the front door. 
The tree, set in a dawn landscape with quiet, starry sky above, calls to mind new beginnings and a sense of calm much larger than the drama of any individual human story. The second mural is in the staff break room. This is called Thank You Heroes. It measures eight feet by eight feet. Similar in style to the larger You Are Loved mural that you'll see in a moment, this one is a secret message to the staff of the Engagement Center. Alex conceived this as a rejuvenating message for them to remind them that they are seen, appreciated, and recognized for the difficult work they're doing. The next mural is titled Tree with Network of Stars. This is in a separate room off the main room where staff and clients can hold meetings, classes, other events for smaller groups. It's called the special program room. This is nine feet high and 16 feet long. Alex wrote, a tree similar to the one in the entrance hall grows quietly in an illuminated night landscape. The stars are linked to one another, calling to mind the connection of human lives within the vast universe. Again, the enormous calm sky exudes a feeling of peace above and beyond the drama of the moment. And the fourth work is in the main room, the main event, You Are Loved, a six foot tall, 61 foot long mural. The words you are loved with letters reduced to their simplest shapes while retaining legibility. A broad color spectrum is analogous to the broad array of life experiences lived by all using the space. Divisions of space and simple dash patterns infuse the whole design with movement. This is a detail of that work, showing the texture and line. All four of these murals are painted in acrylic on a primed plaster wall. There is a maintenance report in your folders that you can review with additional information from the artist. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Uh, this is wonderful. And I, I would like to first just say how exciting this work is and how beautiful it is. And I think also, um, you know, we had a few points of feedback that we gave to the artists at the last uh, session about this project and they seem to all have been integrated really uh, wonderfully. And that, that scene now of the stars seems magical to me in a way that I don't think it was earlier. And I just really want to say it's, it's incredibly beautiful. Uh, and the pieces also seem to hold together uh, extraordinarily well um, as a kind of essay across a building. So Alex, I want to thank you for, um, for working with us and then for also producing something so beautiful for a community that uh, can use more beauty. So I'll open it up now um, to any questions or comments that commissioners might have. Well, I just want to echo what Mark said. I think that was beautiful, uh, a beautiful resolution of some of the minor issues that were brought up by commissioners. And um, I feel serenity looking at these pieces. And at the same time, I, I have a sense of exuberance and, and joy of life. So I think um, people are really going to benefit from it, whether it's conscious, conscious or not. Um, I think that this will add so much to the environment. So thank you. Any other comments or questions before I open it to the public? Just, just to echo what, what, um, um, what you both said, Equa and Mark, you know, I think in particular the You Are Love mural just feels so much um, of what it does mean. And it's so powerful visually um, that you really get the feeling of love. So thank you. Yes. Great. I have to say this one in the big room at the scale that it is, is really powerful mm -hmm. uh, and the message as well. So I'll open it up now to comments from the public. I see Jennifer Tracy has her hand raised. Jennifer, if you unmute yourself, you can make your comments. Yes, hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm on a, another meeting. So, um, but I wanted to take the time um, to just show and share our gratitude 
um, for for Alex and the work, uh, the whole team, the commission uh, and the mayor's office that worked with us really um, over several years to lead up to this actual mural. Um, the team at Recovery Services that works on the ground as well as the folks that are receiving the services, um, I don't have to tell you have been through a lot in the past uh, couple of years, particularly with COVID. Our staff that work in this space have been working seven days a week, 12 hours a day, um, all throughout the pandemic. So the, the new building and the murals in particular have um, really uh, added a lot of uh, hope um, and energy to the team, which is very much needed. Um, I wanted to just share our deep uh, uh, gratitude for, for this project. And we um, are very much looking forward to A, moving in next week, um, and B, sort of inviting others to to come and share um, this, you know, the, the space and this beautiful work. So um, thank you. Well, thank you for those comments and also for all the work that you're doing. Um, we think uh, this is such a uh, important organization within the city. So thank you for um, doing what you're doing. Uh, we have another comment from Sabrina. Hi all, Sabrina Dorsenbaum, Director of Civic Design at the New York Mechanics. And um, in the last four years, a collaborator with the Office of the Recovery Services to bring the engagement center uh, to life. And so I think in a lot of our iterations of this uh, particular space, we were always asking how color and art and creativity could uh, really, you know, make space for, I think, the, the vision of the future that we want for, for folks who are navigating substance use disorders. And I will say that I'm just so grateful that um, Alex, you spent the time not only to sit down and actually talk with folks, but just seeing it really embodied here, the sense of welcoming, right? The sense of uh, love and care. Um, and so just really, really grateful and also super excited for the guests and the staff to uh, see the really subtle and obvious messages that um, you've, you've been able to, to bring in here. So thank you for helping us achieve that goal. And, and yeah, we're, we're just super filled with gratitude. Great, thank you, Sabrina. And we're grateful to have partners like you in the city. Um, it seems like uh, this is a very feel good conversation and uh, deservedly so. I think this is really great work. Um, so I think our task before us today uh, is to determine if we want to accept um, these four pieces into our collection formally. Chair, so what we would- I'm, I'm yes. sorry, Chair, it's Sarah. I just wanted to add one more thing to the feel good, okay. which is that I wanna thank Sabrina for initially bringing the engagement center to us as a possible site, which mm -hmm. was um, incredible vision and just a wonderful opportunity um, for her and for Roan and facilities. Um, who brought this to us a while back. And I wanna thank Liza, our consultant, who has been on the ground with everybody throughout this process. Um, and I don't know if Liza wanted to say anything now or at, you know, as we move through these next two approvals, but she has been incredible. So I just had to add that <laughs> now. Liza, Sorry do you to have a comment? Thank you, Sarah. Um, it's been an honor and a pleasure to work with all of these three artists uh, who you'll see today. Um, it was particularly um, great to work with Alex for this project as well. Um, it's not often that you're able to work with uh, an artist with such ease through the process and through its installation as well. Um, you know, Alex did not present any kind of um, hesitance or or anything for the task at hand which i think can be seen through the art that was executed so beautifully okay great uh so you know i think that this is why we all wanted to join the art commission uh is for things like this that have a heartening impact on our city uh in a meaningful way and with uh quite a lot of great collaborations and partnerships uh, on the route, and also a very fine artist doing uh, amazing work for the public. So um, I do encourage us to accept this piece, but uh, we need an official motion to accept the piece 
Uh, well, actually, let me ask um, uh, Sarah, do we consider this four pieces or one piece? Uh, maybe that's a question for the artist. Alex, if you're still there, do you consider this one um, continuous piece or do you want us to label it for? I think of it as, as four pieces that are linked, but probably more accurately, it's four pieces. Okay, great. Um, so why don't we see if we can get a motion to accept the four pieces? Um, and do we have a title for each that we could just include uh, in yes, our- Yes, I just plugged them in there. If you look at the screen, you should oh, see- okay, great. We're gonna make an effort just administratively to capture motions again as we go. Live um, so you should, Yeah, okay. it just makes our life a lot easier. Um, but we do have the titles um, plugged in right there. Okay, so I would say the language might be to accept the four artworks and then list the four uh, into the Boston Art Commission or the City of Boston Art Collection, public art collection, something like that. So would anybody formally like to make that motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, Kim, thank you. Do we have a second? A second. Brian, you take it. Great. Uh, so give me one second here. Just have to get my list. Okay, so I will now um, ask each commissioner to state their vote as I call your name. Uh, first up, Aqua Holmes. An enthusiastic yes. Great, thank you. Camilo Alvarez? Yes. John Andrus? Yes. Michael Canizzo? Yes. Cara Elliott Ortega? Yes. Robert Freeman? Yes. Brian Hone? Yes. And Kim Pinder? Let it yes. Yes, great. You, you made the motion, you're certainly gonna say yes to it. Uh, and I am a yes, a resounding yes as well. So the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations to the artist and all those who've been involved as partners um, uh, and really a, a wonderful addition to our collection and to the public space of our city. So thank you everyone. Next up, I will turn it over to Aqua. Okay, now let me just get myself together here because I'm looking at a separate screen. So next we're going to talk about uh, Together, which is at the Engagement Center done by uh, the artist collective, I believe Ms. Ikar and Sarah will present. Sarah, are you there? Sarah, you're muted. Oh. I have two screens. I'm sorry. I no. forget <laughs> one of the 10 things. Um, so let me see if I can say this as well as I just did. I won't be able to. Uh, this project is also at the Engagement Center in Newmarket. We just saw the interior artworks by Alex Cook. And this is the exterior murals by Ms. Ikar. Um, I just want to reiterate again that this work would not be possible without so many of those amazing partners that we just acknowledge and who are joining us here tonight. Including, I believe the artist is also here for this project, Ms. Zikar, and I'd like to invite them if they wish to say a few words before I read through their project descriptions and give some of the details. I don't, uh, Ms. Ikar, if you'd like to We'd welcome it. Hi, everybody. Um, I'd like to first um, first uh, acknowledge and extend gratitude to the City of Boston's Transformative Public Art Program and the Mayor's Office of Art and Culture for supporting and funding this project. We'd also like to thank Street Theory Gallery for helping us literally get it together. Um, we had the privilege and an honor to meet with the staff and guests of the engagement center, hear their stories, hopes for the future, and learn about how this future is coming to fruition. And um, we we attempted to channel we attempted to channel a strong 
connection to radical love um, through this piece. Uh, we had a chance to chat with everyone and, um, and ask them how they would like to feel upon entering the engagement center. And there was a strong focus on community, togetherness, and relief. So we um, use the words together and relief to create a colorful beacon that embodies those feelings in, um, in a buoyant manner. And so, um, yes, this is together. Thank you so much. I can't possibly improve on that. Um, I'll just say in summary, uh, it's a colorful love letter that serves as a reminder that we're connected, valuable, and on a journey. I, I love that phrase that you wrote. Um, you can see some other views of the artwork here. This is on the front of the building. It measures 63 feet wide and 15 and three quarter feet high on the front wall, the together side, um, 14 feet wide and 15 feet, nine inches high on the parking side. It's a combination of paint and vinyl wraps. On the brick and stone surfaces, the artist primed them with masonry primer and applied an anti graffiti coating. Um, as with the previous project, there is a maintenance report in your folders that goes into specific materials. And um, yeah, that is the project. Just beautiful. Um, I'd like to open the floor now for a commissioner comments, uh, questions. I'd just like to say the legibility of together in the mural, I think works really well now. So thank you for making that change. I know that was a suggestion from us at our last meeting. Um, and I think it works really, really well. It's just beautiful. I would say similarly, it's uh, really exciting to see this come to life. The piece almost kind of jumps off the wall uh, and it's so colorful and vibrant. Um, it's also fun to see these projects come to life so quickly. I, I know there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes, but um, it seems like we you know, just recently kind of reviewed this and to see it come to fruition so quickly is really exciting. And I'm excited that the residents of Boston can also interact with this artwork now. So thank you so much. It's funny, I felt the same way, Brian. Uh, I was sort of thinking when I was looking through the presentation earlier, uh, I looked at it in small scale and I said, thought, wow, they did some pretty good renderings of these things. <laughs> I didn't realize that they could be completed quite so quickly. Uh, it may not feel quick to the artist, but uh, uh, really um, very exciting to see it and exciting to see the scale of it. And I look forward to passing by here um, sometime soon and, and, and spending a little more time looking at it. The other thing that's nice to hear is that sort of the relationship between the staff and the residents and the artists uh, and the city working together so harmoniously. And, and maybe that's part of the reason why it seems like things have moved so quickly. Um, they don't always, but um, that certainly is a, a great ingredient for, for good, good energy. So thank you for that as well. Any other commissioner comments or questions? I'm sure we'll all be driving by. Sometime. One more thing, I like the the fact that together you are loved is a sort of phrase that you get revealed to you over over the over the time of the two two uh, murals. Nice. Inside and out, speak to each other. All right, then I'm, I'd like to open up to anyone else, either uh, folks that were working on the project who might like to say something now or members of the public who might like to say something, ask a question before we get to our vote. It looks like Sabrina raised her hand. Sabrina, welcome back. Welcome back, yeah, no, thank you. I just, <laughs> I think it's, uh, it feels like an understatement and I want to be really quick, but just to say that, you know, we started with a tent. We started with a tent that was incredibly gray and we painted the floors and hoped for color and life. And now we have an inside that is bright and brilliant. And we had a tent. It was a big white tent. And now we have this amazing pop that stands out amongst all these dark buildings, right? In a space that I think needs and wants and calls for this kind of love and care. 
And so I do want to express so much gratitude to the partnership with Arts and Culture and for, for Jen and folks for, for sort of like trusting the process because yes, a rendering does not do justice to what it looks like to stand in front of this space. And so as someone who held up posters being like, which artist do you like? Um, I'm very, very, very grateful that in a short order of time, we were able to start with a seed of an idea and come all the way to this, this gift that we can really offer both the, the folks that are going to utilize the space, but, but also passers-by. And so I just want to say thank you to Missy Carr and team and the whole collective and Liza and folks and just excited to continue to see projects like this through. So just want to extend gratitude to you all. All right, thank you, Sabrina. Liza, did you have anything uh, you wanted to add to this one as well? Sure, um, I just want to acknowledge the commitment that all of these artists had to um, making sure that we could get some artwork up during this season. Um, it did go by pretty quickly and it was a, a great coordination of um, all departments, um, all hands on deck. And so I want to um, thank Ms. Akar for their work and, and the added complication of it being an exterior wall, uh, a piece of public art, because we were um, really uh, in a race for time, weather-wise, um, and, you know, um, there are certainly added elements to deal with when doing work outside as well that I think um, Ms. Akard's team um, dealt with gracefully and professionally and beautifully. So thank you, everybody. I just want to acknowledge um, Jen's comment about um, the concerns about it being too much color, but that in the end, the um, guests love all of that color. That's really great to hear. Um, and also the combination of paint and vinyl is also interesting, um, blending those two types of mural making together. I don't know that we've seen anything like that before, but hopefully again, it will be used again when needed. So if there are no other um, thoughts or comments, then um, we would love to entertain a motion um, by one of the commissioners that we accept this work together into the city's collection. I can make a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the piece together by artist Mizakar into the public art collection of the city of Boston. Nicely done. And I'll second that. Beautiful. All right, so now our roll call will start with uh, Camilo. If it's a yes, you know what to do. Yes, yes. thank you. Kara. Yes. John. Yes. Brian. Yes. Michael. Yes. Kim. Did we lose Kim? Okay, um, Mark? Yes. And Robert? Yes. And I'm also a yes. So um, the motion passes and uh, welcome together to the City of Boston's art collection. I missed it. Oh, there's Kim. Yes, now. for me too. <laughs> Did I miss someone else? Yes, sorry. Okay. That's, that's uh, Kim. So it's unanimous. Thank you so much, commissioners. And on to our third piece. Thank you, Eka. Um, the final presentation for acceptance into the collection is Dujan's Dal Hir Hual, which is Breton for Respecting Longevity by Cyril Conan. Sarah will present again. And hopefully I got that close to right. <laughs> I put that on your slide and not mine. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> So as, a, as you mentioned, there's a third project um, in the transformative program. This is cited at the Patricia White Apartments in Brighton, which is a BHA community of older Bostonians.
Um, again, we are joined by the artist. Um, and I would like to invite him to say a few words um, because very kind of all these artists to come. And I'd also like to acknowledge Liza up front because she's been getting acknowledged um, sort of toward the end with some of our partners. We have amazing partners on all these projects. I mean, with the Engagement Center and then BHA was a fantastic partner with this. Uh, Leticia Raymond was instrumental in helping us out. And so I just wanted to um, ask Cyril, but maybe also Liza, if they want to speak about the piece. Hi, hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, I just wanted to say first off, thank you to the whole Boston Art Commission. Um, I've always wanted to work something, jump the scale to this like to this height, maybe even bigger. And um, I'm just really full of gratitude. Um, it was just a great experience. Uh, the people there were fantastic. And uh, I'm just glad that I was able to get it off without a hitch. I don't know if you can hear me okay, because I have a mask on, I'm at work. Yes, no, we're, that's good. Okay, Thank okay. You. Yeah. No, Sarah, do you have great. more to add or should I? No, please go on. So, I meant Sarah. Um, I don't know if Liza, you want to add anything right now? Um, sure, I can just add that it was a pleasure to work with Surreal on this project and with Boston Housing Authority and Letitia Raymond. Um, Letitia was um, extremely helpful in helping us get an engagement session together with the residents at the building. Um, and from, you know, all the stories that I heard from Cyril and my check-ins with him during the process, it was really fun to hear about, you know, the children from across the, the street coming by and cheering him on. And um, I went and did a site visit one day and there were residents who were just passing by and saying hello and showing such cheer and joy and gratitude during the process. Um, and it was a wonderful experience to see that happening uh, while the work was going up. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll now open it up to commissioner comments uh, and thoughts. Uh, and I'll begin us off by just saying, Cyril, I've enjoyed your work. I think the first time I saw your work was when it was in Boston City Hall in the main space. and. Rarely do you see a work of art that can actually compete with that building. And uh, I was so impressed by uh, uh, the piece as having such a strong graphic presence uh, in a space that can often dwarf uh, pretty much everything. Uh, and I'm a fan of the building, but it was great to see it in dialogue with um, something like what, what you placed there. And so this is great to see another work that will be in dialogue with the neighborhood. So thank you very much for what's a really compelling, beautiful uh, piece. Other commissioner comments? Um, just for fun, I would love for Cyril to uh, pronounce the title of the piece so we can all yes, be- please, Yes, please, <laughs> yes. And, and say how close I was. You're pretty close. <laughs> Dijoise dal Hirois. Okay, I was oh. not very close, but <laughs> <He's being laughs> it kind. sounds much more elegant coming out of your mouth. Absolutely. Beautiful piece though, uh, Cyril. I can't wait to see it in person. Um, I'm also a fan of your graphic sensibility and um, there's so much to see here. So thank you for that. Other, any other commissioners like to make a comment? I was just wondering where it was in connection to the um, uh, engagement center. Where this, ah, thank you. It's a bit across town, huh? Right, okay, it's across town. Thank you so much. And I agree with uh, what was said. It's just beautiful, strong, um, dynamic piece um, that, that people will, will, can't avoid looking at as they pass by. So thank you so much uh, to the artist, Cyril. I also just wanna add that um, I've heard from a few different BHA staff um, about how excited they are about this piece and seeing it go up and how they've been hearing about it from residents. So um, just like a really positive experience all around. So, so thanks for that as well. Great. All right, are there any comments from the public before we move to a motion? 
Hearing none, uh, once again, we'd be looking for a motion to accept this artwork into uh, the city of Boston collection too. So do I hear such a motion? I move um, we accept the artwork into the city of Boston, respecting longevity. Great. I will second that. Okay. Uh, so I will begin uh, reading the roll call. Uh, Aqua? That's a yes. Camilo? Yes. John? Yes. Michael? Yes. Cara? Yes. Robert? Yes. Brian? Yes. And Kim? Yes, it's a very beautiful piece. Great, and I am a enthusiastic yes as well. Glad to have it in the collection of the city. Uh, so the motion passes unanimously again. We've had three unanimous motions uh, pass uh, tonight and three uh, sets of really wonderful artworks added to our city. So this feels like a big accomplishment tonight. So thank you to everybody who put an enormous amount of hard work into uh, improving our city and making it more beautiful. Totally agree with that, Mark. Um, now our final presentation uh, is uh, for review on final design, and that is for uh, Play 23, the artwork for the DeWitt Playground. So we're looking to potentially vote on this today. Uh, the team is here to present. Please feel free to unmute yourself and begin your presentation. And if everyone else would just mute themselves, we'll look forward to um, seeing this presentation. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you so much for having us here tonight to present our final design. Um, Marlon, I'll let Marlon present himself. Yes, hi, I just wanted to say thank you to the city of Boston as well as the, uh, the mayor's office of arts and culture and the Boston Arts Commission for just the opportunity to continue to move this work forward at this final stage. So um, I couldn't change my name, but I'm Hansi Better Barraza. <laughs> I'm not Studio Luz, I'm part of Studio Luz. Um, we're collaborating with artist Mar Marlon Forrester on this um, fantastic public art project. Next. So we were in front of you explaining kind of the process, the development of the public art project. And we really took in some of the commissioner's feedback mostly as it relates to the locations of the canopy. So what we wanted to present to you is um, those minor kind of modifications and hopefully get your final approval for the project. Um, the site is on the DeWitt playground. It's at the corner of um, DeWitt Drive and Ruggle Street. And you can begin to see what's currently existing on the site in terms of its context. So the first view is the existing pathway and you're looking at the um, at the basketball court and then as you approach the basketball court there's um, an existing fence which you see here that divides the full court with the half court and it's an actual site of one of our interventions next in terms of the project vision and marlene feel free to add on we held kind of our um our mission in terms of what this public art has to offer to the community it's an it's a structure, it's various structures that through play, um, it allows for um, kind of con moments of contemplation, um, moments of collection, um, ideas of education is kind of embedded within the artwork and also to kind of pay homage to kind of historical figures that have shaped the park and also to um, commemorate kind of contemporary figures that is continually shaping our cultural environment. Next. And, and just, just, and oh, just to add on, I'm sorry, and just to add okay. in, I think um, the location is, is key, right? Madison Park Developmental Complex and Madison Park High Schools with, as well as the DeWitt Center are both locations in where young people have access uh, and are directly uh, interfacing with this world uh, on a daily uh, as they transition to and forth throughout the park. So we really wanted to meet the needs of students, especially those who are uh, you know, first generation students to kind of educate them in some way not, uh, about the cultural history of the, of the region. Marlon, you're doing a fantastic job. Why don't you introduce the four pieces? Continue. Well, thank you, Nancy. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so uh, the four pieces that uh, initially we worked on was uh, the, the mirror of history, uh, the fence of history, the sidelines and the shaded canopy. Uh, today, I think our focus is to look at the shaded canopies. Uh, you know, they've kind of transitioned from their initial spot to another placement, um, as well as to look at the wall of history. And we're gonna talk about the, uh, the perforated metal um, sheets and also some of the different design concepts based on how those images will be laid out. Uh, we're also looking at the silhouettes of history. Um, we uh, were able to receive some feedback from Sarah and, um, and we're thinking about how to, to uh, make it more accessible. Uh, so you will see that we're thinking about uh, moving or at least the silhouettes uh, to allow for handicap accessibility, as well as we also embedded in uh, you know, um, some braille, raised braille for uh, those who uh, need access to it, as well as some embedded text. Um, so uh, they can read about the history of the figures that we've embedded into the, uh, the silhouettes. Next. So I think, uh, I think this just kind of provides a recollection that we took into consideration the existing utilities on, on the site. So our intervention stays clear of all utility lines. Um, it stays clear of major kind of grade changes uh, and also accommodates um, and ensures that there's not high reflectivity on the artwork. So um, we kind of took care of a little bit of the glare that usually reflective metal has, and we're providing, we're working with the fabricator um, to apply a low reflective modeler film onto the metal to um, remove the, the high Next. So in terms of um, mirror history, Marlon, do you wanna give some, um, some feedback in terms of how this was conceptualized? So the, for us, the memory of history and for me, uh, the idea of uh, using historical figures within the context of Boston, uh, not just athletes, but those who are embedded within the cultural framework. Uh, we used uh, Reggie Lewis, Martin Luther King, Elma Lewis, Harry Tugman, Mel King. And then we also took feedback from the local, uh, uh, you know, the MDC, the, those who live within the area. And we embedded some of the actual uh, first members, founding yep. uh, members. Next of the Madison Park Developmental Complex. Next, you'll see that in the next slide. Yep, there you go. So you can, um, so the Madison um, Park founder, um, we actually were in conversation with Shavala and, um, and we actually shared with them our last presentation in front of you and uh, took it back to the community and asked us if we would consider putting the, the founders, uh, specifically Ralph Smith, Vincent Haynes, to this um, mirror history. And you can begin to see the group photo um, next to Martin Luther King um, underneath. Right, yep, exactly, right there. And so that's a slight change from what you from what we presented. And we're currently working with um, copyright permission in terms of what images are allowed um, for us to use. And then there's others like uh, Reggie Lewis that does have um, a cost associated to them. So what we're presenting is final design and um, and we just have to then figure out um, the purchasing of those um, of those photographs. I would say also, I think um, the idea of the geometric shapes uh, that are, are derived from the basketball court really found really function as an opportunity to create a cultural kind of transition, right? A space, a liminal space in where, you know, these cultural histories come together and become present uh, and display for others. So I think uh, in terms of materiality, you have um, perforated metal that has 40% kind of opening with the applied graphic. You have open kind of transparent areas to allow at least some transparency through the, through the fence. Um, through the artwork. And then you also have just metal sheets um, with the reflective coating. So it is kind of a collage. I think this is a very kind of important piece. It feels like you're constantly in the museum and uh, and the histories is, is living. And so I think this is um, out of all our four pieces, I think this is a really important mural for the community. Okay, next. So in terms of um, 
testing what we were what we were testing uh, was two approaches to how do we begin to display the figures. One is you literally are applying a graphic onto the metal. Um, and that's what you see on the option one of the Obama figure. And then option two is an actual custom perforation that provides the image itself. Um, so with the fabricator, we were getting um, cost in terms of what would be the most eco economical kind of approach to showing the portraits. That's what you see here. And actually, if you pass <laughs> down our office in Rosendale, you'll see these large mock-ups um, and they're pretty effective. So we're already doing large one-to-one -one mock-ups. Next. In terms of um, defensive history, we did select four, uh, Martin Luther King, Reggie Lewis, Mania Cass, and Malcolm X. And as Marlon mentioned, we did receive some feedback in terms of accessibility. And one of the feedback that we received is, um, can you locate this in such a way where they're spaced apart that someone can have the turning radius of five feet um, so they can actually access the braille that's going to be behind. Um, next. So um, as, you, as you know, there's a path. And then these are actually located in the grass. One of the recommendations was, can we carve out um, and basically make it almost as part as a path so there's no obstruction for accessibility? So that's recent kind of feedback and we will accommodate that. The silhouettes are currently on a base and that's just really to maintain um, the artwork lifted from the ground in terms of maintenance. Um, on, on the front, you would see the actual cutout figure which is true to height. Typically the panels are eight feet tall um, and you'll have the name and also you would have a quote. And then in the back, you'll have um, content like information about the historic figure. And then you would have a braille um, plaque. Next. Uh, so we worked with um, standards of accessibility in, in terms of what reads we did a, a couple of mock-ups as well in terms of the different types of fonts that reads really well uh, standing far, you know, at least five, eight feet away. And the best height was of a, high, a font of five eighth inch. Um, the larger you'll you see there, it's about three to three inches tall. And then the quote is at one inch and it reads pretty well. Again, we did, we did some mock-ups and we think this is the best. In terms of stability, the fabricator did recommend that we do a, um, a steel plate stabilizer, and that's what you see on the edge. So, um, you know, so it can hold up because it's a very tall piece. So you have a little thin blade. Okay, next. In terms of the side lines, um, um, you know, this is Marlon's beautiful artwork that people are going to occupy and, and, and play on. And I think it's, it's um it's going to add a lot to the to the court in terms of um uh, next so this is another kind of um an intervention the shaded canopy was the one that we had the most feedback and i'll in the next image we'll show you where we had proposed it earlier in uh in front of you know in front of you so before we had located um the canopy central to the court and it was, you know, we weren't very conscious of the existing infrastructure in terms of the bench. So we did go out there and we did survey and you see that it really is obstructing the existing bench. And so, um, and then on the other side, it was really, you know, there's an existing bench there. So the, you, you've asked us for us to, you know, is this a shaded canopy? Is this a bench? What is it? Can we rethink the location? Um, and you can begin to also see on the right side at the bottom that the the side lines are kind of, it's kind of jagged. Uh, it, it is not, it's not um, perpendicular. So the, there's kind of a jagged edge and you'll see that we are proposing to infill that. Next. So um, what we decided to do was to um, move the exist on the left, move the existing benches farther out. So just spread them out and um, really propose a shady canopy at the center to the left to be kind of a gateway. And then what we're proposing to the right is um, uh, putting the 
the shaded canopy as a portal to the park to the lower to the lower and this was really um suggested by uh by marlon <laughs> in terms of how he saw the art and space and and play uh, and i think you'll have some good images that would also show that next okay so here is the updated location that really shows you our strategy which is moving up the bench 15 feet so it, we're not taking away from the amenities we're just kind of shifting them so they work a little better um marley do you want to um tell us like the logic of where the locations of the canopy and you know why are they located there um so for the canopy the locations are there because um you know the idea of entering and exiting the space in a dramatic way and thinking about it almost as a pavilion right um and so i also thought about uh, as a young person playing there you know um the winner when you entered the space the drama between teams um and being able to locate oneself you know at the beginning and end of a game as entering the winner and the loser or whomever um also i i thought about the idea specifically in the color too as well how that function to really bring light to the sculptures and enhance their presence within the context of the space. So the 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 canopies are really portals, they're gateways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's how we're seeing them. They're portals to the to the court. Mm -hmm. Next. So I think that's where you see the surface treatment. Um, we'll have to remove the bituminous um, pavement to ensure that we have like a concrete pad um, to take in um, the canopies. And then at the bottom lower corner, you begin to see that we'll have to extend the existing um, bituminous concrete all the way down. So uh, it completes kind of the core. And we did um, survey the site and it take, and it's completely clear from the existing tree. So it won't harm the root of the tree. Next. And you can begin to see it. We did this in context, so you can see how um, by extending that surface, um, the existing tree is, is not harmed. Um, and you can begin to see this is literally where the portal, where the gate is uh, in terms of the entry. Next. And then last, the, at the last presentation, we were still unclear in terms of the color and, um, and Marlon, uh, is proposing that the, the shaded canopy or the portal is this red. Uh, and I think in it, we tested it in various kind of material like gray and this one really popped out and we thought it was, it, it was, it was a perfect um, uh, paint, you know, to, to include. Uh, so in terms of another issue that was brought up by Sarah was um, the idea that the angles of um, the columns uh, might be a little bit of an obstruction to someone who's visually impaired. And um, we're recommending, actually, it's not that extreme in our construction drawings, but we are, we also can do these, um, they're kind of like bubble, like little domes on that you can put on, on ground to as you know to notify it's an, a, kind of an alert al to alert the visually impaired that there's something on un you know above you so we we could treat the ground to make sure that um someone as visually impaired does not get caught in the angle column um but again the geometry of that working with the fabricator is not as extreme as is shown in the rendering okay next and then here's the other portal with the 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 seating in context. So this is a very light, you know, a light portal. It'll go really well with the side lines. And I think this completes our our presentation. Next, let's make sure. Oh, here are um, we did complete all the construction drawings uh, for the interventions, and that was so we can get some real hard numbers. Um, and so. In terms of um, working with the fabricator, uh, you know, it was suggested that we can do kind of perforated metal, or we can do a perforated fabric. I think the perforated metal um, will last much longer. You don't have to replace the fabric, so I think that's what we're leaning towards. And then you can begin to see that this is really metal and just um, a tubing. Very, very simple. Next. And then you can see here the dimensions of the of 
of, you know, which is about nine to 10 feet tall. Next. We actually also did a model. So the fabricator asked us to make a model, you know, and if it stands in a model, it's going to stand. Uh, and so you can also come to our office and see an actual physical model of the canopy. Um, here you can see how important um, this beautiful art piece is. I think um, what I would love to hear from you in, in terms of um, the final design is if by any chance something had to go, which which of the RPs would go? Um, <laughs> uh, I have a little bit of clues in terms of, um, of of budget, but hopefully I would love to know like out of all the pieces, which pieces like really want some of the most important, if we can rank them, that would be really great. Again, We'll try really hard to implement all four, but um, to be honest with you, we are a little bit over budget. <laughs> okay, next. And then you can begin to see, um, we're gonna space the silhouette a little bit farther, but you can begin to see things in context. Next. Yep, I think that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Marlon. And um, can you say your name? Hansi, I'm so sorry, I can't change okay, my no name. No worries, no worries. Hansi. Thank you so much for, for a great presentation. Um, we've been watching this with lots of excitement. Um, I love uh, Marlon's design sense, and I think it's gonna bring a lot to this, this part of the city. Um, I'd like to invite the commissioners to comment, ask questions. Um, but I do have something that's sort of a burning question for me, and that is on the um, mirror of history. I feel like some of the images are sort of fit into a space awkwardly. And I'm wondering if you have given that a lot of thought, if you could go back to that. Can you go back to the one that's straight across where we can see how the figures are fit in? I think it's, it's here. Um, awkward cuts like across Malcolm X's sort of neck there or um, Mel King sort of separating his head from the rest of his body. Um, I'm wondering if, if you could talk a little bit more about how you made those decisions, having the founders be so small. Um, I'm just curious how you came up with, with your choices there and if you're open to maybe shifting things around a bit or, um, yeah, I guess that's my question. I think, yeah. oh, go ahead, Marlon, you go. Oh, yeah. No, um, you for go. Me, I, I'll just jump in very quickly. I think for me, in terms of the separation, um, you know, once again, it goes back to the idea of, you know, using this kind of embedded pattern that, that is related to ideas of transformation and this piece being an intergenerational piece, right? It's, it sits in a space, a little space in which design, um, and ritual transformation, all that is kind of embedded in. And I think even thinking about Mel, which I've met many times, Mel has always been one to push, um, you know, the idea of design, even with Ten City um, and all of his work previously, social justice work he's done within the community. Um, so him being fractured, it, I would say that he look at that and say, you know what, I have pieces of many, you know. Um, but I can understand what you're talking about in terms of the founder, the, the size and scale of the founders in comparison to them. So I think that's there's, there's spaces for modifications to take place. And that's great feedback, Equa. Thank you. Um, just, you know, consider this as a possibility. This came across my mind, like the whole tent city piece as maybe a part of this mural that Mel was so instrumental in the fact that there is now a tent city apartment building, but there actually was a tent city um, or uh, here where Reggie Lewis is kind of, he's kind of cut off from his legs here. Maybe that's audience, um, you know what I mean? So just considering some of the other textures that you can bring to the stories that you're, um, that you're enlightening us about here. I, I love the feedback. I think, um, I think it's a good one. Like um, don't fragment the male body or don't fragment the female body, you know, put put additional bodies in there. I think it's a very good critique. Okay, 
Well, thank you for keeping it well. And uh, so now I'll just open the floor to other commissioners who might have questions, um, but certainly I love the design of this wall um, and uh, other thoughts. I can add a thought. I mean, I, I love the complexity of the combination of these artworks um, on the site. Um, I had a couple of specific questions because I think we've seen it before and we've all you know, really appreciated how it tells multiple stories and kind of crosses generations. So my, my questions are kind of mundane and, and somewhat specific, but uh, one is the portal, the second portal, the first portal I get, the second one is not actually at an arrival point. There's a kind of lawn in front of it. So I'm curious whether you thought about um, reconfiguring um, a means of getting to that portal. If it's going to be such an attractor, will there be, you know, a line of uh, a sort of cow path line uh, or line of desire there that should actually be a physical path? Um, so that's one question. Um, and the second question is one that did come up earlier. It does seem like it's maybe accommodated here, but I noticed that some of your columns for the canopies are, uh, they seem to be now moved back, I guess, right? Is that correct? I, I was looking at two different plans. Yeah, we did, move, we, the, we did move them back to make sure that there was enough clearance for the players okay, to go okay. off sidelines. Mm -hmm. So like go one forward, one forward, and one more forward, sorry. Uh, oh, am I, there was another plan that looked like it was closer to the edge. Is that an old plan? It could be, yep. Okay. So the They're new plan is the last one that you showed us? Yeah, so um, one of them has, it's close to, close to 44 inches um, from the edge of the core. And then the other one is like five, at least five feet. Okay. And then, um, and then maybe this question about the... Um, visually impaired uh, engagement with those columns might be a question that the staff can work with you on um, uh, with the, um, you know, with our, our city commissions that, that deal with those issues so that they feel comfortable as well. So okay. I think you answered the second and the third one is sort of just a recommendation, uh, but the path question maybe would be one that's still open to me. Yeah, I think um, we imagine, and Marlon, maybe, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I imagine that it was just a projection. So the side lines is the artwork and then it just projects up. So um, I think the suggestion of the portal was, you know, bringing back like Michael Knitzel's question before, like, is it, a, is it a canopy, you know, to shelter you with seating, you know, like what is its use? And so I think the function of it is really a gateway. I think the art is, about its projection and its multi-dimensionality. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's about like leaning you to a place. And, and, and for me, you know, having played on that court many times uh, in the uh, BNBL league, um, the city canopy really was for me, a space of rest, you know, uh, when it's hot as hell out there, you know? Sure. And um, especially for, you know, those who come with family with small children, uh, who want to watch the game but don't want to directly be on the court um, and still be able to experience it. My, my question also, was actually much much less interesting than that. It was just really whether there's a need for a hardscape path that leads to this portal the way that the other portal has. So you have two, two portals, you had two little dash blue lines, but one of them went across a lawn. Mm. So I'm curious about you know whether there's a need for some more landscape treatment there to mm. engage this as a real arrival point off of the city versus something where you, you know, walk across grass, which isn't necessarily the best um, way to I get, get it. it. Yep. So just like a connector. Yeah. Yeah. I think we also have Kathy Baker clips here as well from parks. Um, Nancy and Marlon, I don't know if, um, if she might be able to uh, be helpful here as well. Hi, I, yes, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I, I apologize. I'm in the car at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think I, my can, I have similar concerns that uh, we'd be creating a strong desire line uh, by putting the, the portal at that corner. Um, and I don't know off the top of my head, whether the grading would allow us to create an accessible path there. Um, whether we're 
we could get a path in under 5% or not. Um, but I think it's, it's worth exploring uh, because I think we're going to be creating a desire line there, whether intentional or not. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, if you can go back to the, the, to the site plan, I don't think I see any really path from that side to the court, right? Um, everything is planted except for up there. So I was going to, I had the same comment or thought that Mark did about um, creating these beautiful uh, structures and then creating a desire line that's going to uh, be a, a cow path. I think that was a good way of putting it. So. Um, And then my other question, Hansi, I'm curious what, I mean, you asked us if we had to sacrifice one of these pieces, which one would we do? It's, it'd be, it'd be, it's kind of hard because I think all of them are fantastic, but without knowing. Michael, you can, want. I, can I interrupt that line? Because I think yep. that we, don't, we shouldn't be making that decision at this point, I think it, it needs to go through a budget review. And then if there does need to be a change like that, they, may, they would have to come back to us. So um, I don't think that we should be preempting it. Let's, let's hope it all, get, it all works out and everything can be done uh, at this point. I think we should run under that assumption. And if there is a need for cutting of budget, then you'd come back to us with a proposal instead of us sort of like, you know, here's our least interested, you know, here's the thing we think you could get rid of. Uh, I think we I should have made that. Say, Mark, that we would need a better sense of the economics before we would make any decisions. I think it's similar to what you're suggesting. Yeah. I'll just jump in here and say that we are going to be talking about the budget and assessing that, as well as following up with colleagues in the Commission for Persons with Disabilities who had given us advisement on accessibility. Um, Sarah Leung and Patricia Mendez um, have been really helpful so far, and I'll keep working with Hansi and Marlon to hammer out some of these details as they move into um, fabrication construction documents. I mean, it's always there's always all these variables to take into account, I think, as they know um, really well at this point. And there's a lot of questions about approach, fabrication approach and materials. Um, even with the perforation, those two choices could make a really big difference, I imagine. So, so we'll just keep working on this. And if there is a major change, it would come back to the commission. Um, so I think that'd be there... the point at which we might, you know, come back and represent if necessary, but hopefully it's not necessary. Is there a, a possibility that um, does it exist or does it always have to be in front of in a in a in a public hearing? So, is there a subcommittee that could just from no. the commissioners? Uh, okay, okay. No, you didn't have to the so, um, Hansi, we can. Uh, you know, I think there's within a sufficient amount of there's a certain amount of leeway for development with uh, if if we make it part of our. Uh, um, our uh, a motion that there can be a certain amount of work with staff that doesn't have to come back to us, but right. then if the major change, it has to come back before us on a monthly meeting. Yeah, got it. Okay, that that's really helpful. Um, we're trying our hardest um, to get all of it done. Um, you know, it just you know we're 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 dealing with site work, so um, I just have to, we have to just get more bids out. <laughs> But thank you. But we our intention is to hold all of it together. I have another um, question about the two perforated options. Um, do you all have a favorite of how you'd like to get that done? Would you like to Im imprint the image or use the perforation to make the image? I'm curious about what your preference would be there and why. So, um, oh, go ahead, Marlon. <laughs> Kenzie, Kenzie, you jump in on this one. I'll, I'll slide in afterwards. Um, we did a mock-up of like the perforation, and it's beautiful, like the perforation. But the perforation is twenty percent more. <laughs> okay. I'm sounding like an architect, <laughs> but you know you have to produce construction drawings to get actual price, real pricing. So I I think we're at this point where um, we would love to get your support and then just work with the BAC staff on honing down that budget and these minor things that deal with um, accessibility issues. Yeah. 
Okay. I mean, I, I feel like um, I trust you all to make the best decisions that you can make within a budget that you can work with. Um, but that's so interesting that that one is 20% more. Um, I'm curious also about the accessibility piece because this is a personal story. I was walking in the woods one day and paying attention to all the branches that were coming toward my face so that I tripped over a root system and sprained my ankle so badly because I was following my head, but where my feet were, there was something obstructing. And so I'm wondering about those angles and if you have had any conversations with um, accessibility uh, professionals about that. We're, we're going to do that with, that's on our next list with Sarah. So that was, um, Sarah met with um, accessibility consultants for the city and gave us that feedback. And my intention was to, um, was to work on that issue. And I think, Kansi, you pointed out that some of these uh, images might be a little bit misleading in terms right. of what the actual angle is. Yep. Um, I mean, typically you'll have pavers that um, makes people slow down, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you can't project more than four inches right above you. So um, we just have to study that a little bit more. But the fabricator was the one that initially brought it up to us that we needed to not be so have not mm -hmm. have so much of an angle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, any other thoughts uh, or questions of um, commissioners? I have, I have a question. Yes, Kim. Um, again, I'm sorry I missed the first round of this proposal. Um, so maybe this was covered then, but I did have a question about um, how the different materials, especially the metals are going to weather and what they, will they always look the same or is there a plan for them to change their appearance? So right now we have it as uh, galvanized painted metal, mm -hmm. and so it's to it's 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 a good material for um, so it doesn't weather. Okay, and it won't have to be repainted or anything. It's just no, that's our hope. No, yeah. it's galvanized. It's galvanized, right? Okay. And an extension of that is the mylar matte film that would be put over the images. How does that stand up to, to weather? Yeah, that was actually um, a, given to us as a suggestion from a fabricator that does just public art. So um, our, next, uh, our next step would be to do mock-ups, but we would need to engage with a, um, a contract. But we we worked. Um, we've been in consultation with someone that does just public art, and provided us that feedback. So I would imagine it has to be in, in maintained. But then maybe you know this is where it might be worth just doing the perforation. I think I think those are the things that we're now at. Mm -hmm. We're at that level of right before signing contract with fabricators to start doing prototypes. Mm -hmm. I have a I have a quick question, and, and it's really I think from Marlon. Uh, and we'll thank you all for this wonderful presentation and the excitement of this park, which is not just going to be exciting for the players, but for the audiences and the people who walk through it. I think it's very exciting. Um, but I, I did want to I want to ask Marlon, who's, who's probably not probably a better ball, ball player than I ever was. Um, but there was a there was the distance between the mirror of of history and the back um, uh, 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 basketball hoop. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure that you've thought about that distance, but in the uh, shot that you showed, it looked like that distance was awfully close. I just remember as a, as a really bad ball player, that, that's the one, um, that I would run down that court and I would hit that mural if it's if it's just like that. My guess is it's not just like that. It's further back, but I just wanted to know if you all, are, I'm sure that you all are taking that in consideration, that distance. And, and Robin, I'm gonna follow up quickly because I, I know we had a discussion about that. I know Hansi will jump in. There's already a fence there. 
and oh. we're using yeah. yeah we're we're placing it on a already constructed fence thank you yeah. you've answered my question thanks Mom. No problem. all right i was uh, actually wondering about this uh fence i mean i'm <clears throat> the the perforation will it be trans it, it won't be translucent so you can see it on both sides right so right now we um in our construction drawings we have it in both both sides and then it's perforated so you'll have some light going through it and then some areas are like what you see you can see through it so the graphic the faces will be facing will be on both sides right? yes that's that's the intention yes. I, again okay. um again it's a it's an additional cost but yes our intention is that it's in both sides okay thank you so it may be that the perforation 20% works out when you don't have to do it on both sides, right? Because your perforation would be, would go all the way through. You'd be able to see the image on both sides. Yeah, that, right. That would be And you wouldn't have to code it. Okay. And then if the perforation doesn't necessarily work, it would be like a graphic vinyl application? Yep, it'll be a graphic um, adhere to a metal. Adhere which would definitely be less durable than the perforation. Um, I would have to find out about that. Yeah. So then, I, I mean, considering the graphic nature of it, I'm wondering if, you know, in order, I mean, maybe some faces can move to the other side, considering it would be a solid. So that way it, there'd be faces on both sides. Okay, um, if there aren't any other commissioners who have questions or comments right now, I'd like to open it up to um, the other members of the meeting. All right. Okay. So this is a situation where we're looking to um, accept the final design so that uh, Studio Luz and Marlin can move forward with this project. Um, I've heard Mark say something about working with staff, or maybe it wasn't Mark this time, yeah. but the possibility. I, do have a, I started to make a motion, so okay. I wonder if I could give Why it a try. Yes, please. Um, so I move that we give Play 23 final approval with, uh, or, sorry, pending review with staff on topics of disabilities, or I'm not sure if that's the right phrase. Uh, Visually uh, impaired, no? <laughs> and just uh, accessibility. Yeah. Accessibility. Uh, regarding issues of um, vis visual impairment. Yeah, that's better. Uh, and the portal location relative to pathways. I guess we should probably add in there somewhere uh, budget as well. I think that falls more under our standard process. And okay. we'll, you know, this is a project that our office is bringing forward to you, you know, with, with the artist team. And so um, we'll continue to work with them. And again, as, as you mentioned, we'll come back to you with any significant changes as, as we would normally. Yeah. And okay. I'd also, if possible, like to include in the motion just to consider um, the graphic representations of the historical figures on the mirror of history. Um, oh, yes. Thank you. The, the graphic design on that. I definitely accept that amendment. Okay. <laughs> All right. Mark, that's a great motion. Uh, of the figures, I think we should make it plural because there's a couple that need some of the figures. Yeah. Okay. So that's my motion. Okay. So we have a second out there. I second that. Awesome, Camilo. All right then. So now we're going to do a roll call. I have to write down everyone's name, you know. Uh, Camilo, since you seconded, we'll start with you. Yes. Kara. Yes. John. 
Yes. Brian? Yes. Michael? Yes. Kim? Yes. Mark? Yes. Robert? Yes. And I'm a yes also. Um, so that motion carries. The um, Clay 23 is approved with the um, description in the motion and we'll look forward to seeing it in its final version. Hey, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, commissioners. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations. Marlon, thank you. Great to see you. Thanks for it's joining gonna us. Be, it's going to be awesome. It is. Thank you. <laughs> so much, yes. All right, Mark. All right, so we have one last task before us this evening. Uh, and since it is our final uh, uh, commission meeting of 2021, we can bid 2021 adieu and uh, hope for an even better 2022. Um, I just wanna say how great it has been to work with all of you and also um, how many things we've accomplished this year. It's uh, somebody mentioned at the beginning that this has been a challenging year, but also I think so many great things have come out of it. So thank you all for staff and commissioners uh, and partners for um, all that we've uh, collectively managed to do in this challenging year. So at this time, I would like to call for a motion to adjourn. I must second that. Oh, sorry. So Kim said who made the motion? Kim made the motion, and then uh, and then Camilla uh, seconded it at the same time. Thank you. <laughs> very, very uh, well coordinated there. Uh, so I'll read off the roll call, and please um, uh, say if you would like to um, adjourn. Uh, Aqua. Yes. Camilo? Yes. John? Yes. Michael? Yes. Cara? Yes. Robert? Yes. Brian? Yes. And Kim? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So the motion passes. We are officially adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thanks, everyone. Happy New Year.